This is Jeff Weiss with part one of a series of two lectures for unit two in plant propagation. Uh, this unit will begin to talk about the growth environment, the propagation environment for um, plant propagation. And we'll start out by talking about uh, class business. Um, the readings for this assignment uh, uh, and next will be a long chapter, chapter three in the Hartman's text. Uh, you'll have uh, two parts of uh, this lecture. Uh, some videos are available for you to look at on, on Enter. And then we'll have a practice uh, a discussion question on uh, allowing you to choose an environmental factor to talk about. and then a combined assignment uh, with f between this week and next week to visit a greenhouse and prepare a brief report on your visit. Um, I th think there's also a survey in this week's uh, enter and uh, or maybe it's at the end of this lecture uh, but uh, it'll also be our first uh, lab uh, Monday night uh, January 27th. So there's a, a slide on that too. Key terms and concepts for this week uh, include the terms uh, propagules. Uh, we'll be going through environmental factors uh, that uh, determine uh, or promote the effective growth of uh, new plants and that they're primarily light, water, temperature, gases, uh, soil, mineral nutrients. Um, We'll uh, mention fertigation and uh, root zone heating, uh, among other uh, concepts in this week's assignment. Learning objectives are to recognize and discuss the main environmental factors that affect propagation success, to list and describe the types of structures that will maintain a favorable propag propagation environment, and to discuss the use of containers and media in propagation. So a uh, propagule is anything that uh, can be used to uh, um, develop a new plant. Um, could be uh, a seed, uh, could be a cutting, could be a, a clump of plants used for uh, divisions, um, could be uh, uh, clones that are uh, dug up out of the ground and replanted, uh, could be in fact uh, in this illustration uh, uh, represents uh, tiny uh, uh, plant starts from um, micropropagules. And uh, these propagules can be grown in an outdoor nursery, either in a container or in the ground, uh, in a greenhouse uh, or some other indoor structure that we'll be talking about during the assignment, a hoop house or a cold frame, a plug tray or a flat, perhaps uh, under a grow lamp in your own home, uh, a greenhouse pot or can, uh, uh, or um, one of the other important dimensions is whether uh, a choice whether to grow uh, propagules in soil or to take advantage of uh, some of the benefits of using soilless media. Uh, so these uh, uh, lab plants grown in petri dishes or test tubes are examples of micropropagation and I'm hoping to line up a guest speaker to talk on this topic later in this class. So your textbook has a, a, a chart uh, and it describes a series of steps uh, and issues that uh, go from uh, starting with uh, gen uh, plants that have been selected to be genetically superior and then uh, using methods um, and considering uh, control measures uh, that uh, cover the whole gamut of uh, issues that uh, are that require consideration in order to produce uh, high quality plants and the idea is to accelerate the production of plants so that they're available for uh, for planting in the ground or for sale in months not years and to get them acclimatized to the natural conditions that they're going to face once they're in the ground and to continue the process of selection, hybridization, and propagation to continue to improve them uh, and their performance over time.
Um, the reason for some of these uh, elements being uh, uh, highlighted in yellow is because these are the things we're going to talk about this week and the additional items uh, starting with the bullets for growth regulators and going on from there are things that we'll um, cover in Unit 3 next week. So the major environmental factors that uh, plants uh, respond to and that determine their success are uh, light and there's several dimensions of um, and measurements for light that we will um, discuss and that your textbook gets into much greater detail about. Uh, water, uh, including humidity and um, uh, uh, the amount of water in the, uh, in the soil. Uh, temperature, uh, gases, and uh, some of the most important gases uh, that we'll be talking about are carbon dioxide and uh, oxygen in the atmosphere. And then there are the uh, elements of soil and nutrients that the uh, plant roots take up um, underground. So the first uh, uh, topic that we'll take up here is water humidity humidity control and this is a critical factor and uh, the more precise we can be in controlling the um, humidity and the amount of water uh, um, getting into the uh, median which the plants are being grown the more um, uh, we can manage and um, promote the success of these plants and reduce the attacks of uh, pathogens that like to grow in soil. So um, this photograph is from the, one of the greenhouses in the, at the Botanic Garden and it illustrates the use of intermittent mist or a fogging system. Uh, and fogging systems are important for propagules, especially cuttings. Uh, they can help um, cool and take the heat load off of the cuttings so that they can utilize um, high light levels and increase their photosynthesis and, and, and as a result grow faster. So uh, in the CLC greenhouse uh, in the lab session you'll see uh, misting systems and uh, uh, we will also talk about uh, irrigation. Now irrigation uh, at CLC is uh, done with a hose and nozzle and watering plants is um, not as easy as it might seem. It's both an art and a science. Uh, too much water can cause uh, disease, uh, spread of uh, fungus, uh, rotting of roots, and too little can cause uh, stress, wilting, and death. So uh, water um, is a critical factor uh, in propagation. And so is light. Um, light obviously is needed for photosynthesis, which is the process uh, that plants use to convert um, carbon in the atmosphere uh, from carbon dioxide gas into the uh, tissue and structures that they need to grow. Uh, light um, uh, has, there's a number of measures for light, um, and it plays a role in determining the photo period or uh, uh, the timing for which plants um, go to flower and conduct other um, events in their life cycle. Uh, uh, light also plays an important role in germination, especially for uh, plants with very small seeds and a wide variety of other processes. So. Um, as illustrated by this uh, chart, uh, the visible spectrum of light is a very uh, small um, uh, part of the spectrum of, uh, of different wavelengths that are out there. And uh, you may not know this, but within the visible spectrum, uh, green and yellow are the least uh, usable um, wavelengths of light and the reason why uh, plants look green to us is because plants reflect most of the green color and make um, much better use of the red and and blue uh, uh, wavelengths than they do of the of the green and yellow so red light enhances uh, germination of lettuce seeds for instance 
and it's the quality of the light uh, and the uh, number of uh, photons, the intensity of the light, the number of photons that are being uh, absorbed into the leaves and uh, being used for photosynthesis along with the photo period, the day, day length. Um, and, and day length um, particularly is uh, manipulated in the case of producing poinsettia plants and having them um, uh, produce their colorful um, foliage just in time for Christmas. Temperature affects a lot of um, things about plants. Um, certainly uh, seed germination is uh, determined by uh, temperature changes and especially as the soil warms up in spring. Um, uh, dormancy is broken and um, seeds begin to uh, germinate. Uh, temperature is a uh, major factor in determining evaporation or evapotranspiration. Uh, that is the water loss from plants' uh, leaves through their stomates. And uh, that water that's lost through evapotranspiration needs to be replaced through the roots. Uh, plant growth rate is uh, largely determined by temperature. Um, there are uh, cool season plants uh, that uh, will uh, grow um, more quickly and have uh, get an earlier start in the spring and continue on into the fall. And there's warm season plants who have experienced their uh, most rapid growth in the um, heat of summer. Uh, rooting uh, is promoted uh, by uh, warmer soil temperatures and there's a number of measures that are taken in order to encourage uh, strong root growth. Uh, some of them are uh, bottom heating where, uh, and I, I think I have a slide, a couple of uh, slides down here where I show uh, wires that are um, uh, located in the greenhouse bench that give um, plants the heat that they need to promote optimal rooting. And then, um, in some instances, the union of uh, grafted tissue is promoted by uh, applying heat only at the uh, location of the graft and uh, uh, trying to leave the, um, the, the rest of the uh, grafted plant uh, cooler so that it will uh, remain dormant. And then temperature is also a critical uh, element in um, gas and gas exchange in plant leaves. So um, there's a number of devices uh, uh, used in plant propagation, and one of them uh, is uh, storage of seeds in refrigerator to maintain their um, their temperature. Uh, that can be used both to uh, stratify seeds uh, uh, in, in cool, moist conditions to promote germination, or uh, cool storage of dry seeds uh, extends their uh, life and storage uh, versus being uh, exposed to heat or even worse, uh, uh, fluctuations in heat and cold periods. So th those fluctuations will rapidly um, uh, degrade seeds and uh, reduce their viability and their likelihood of germinating. And then uh, see, uh, temperature is uh, controlled in greenhouses by a variety of uh, techniques, both heating and cooling. And the photo on the right uh, illustrates a greenhouse evaporative cooling system where water is uh, run across a, uh, um, a, 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 a this, uh, I can't think of the word, um, this bin or this uh, uh, barrel and it generates uh, cool temperatures which is then blown into the nearby greenhouse in order to cool off the plants and the air temperatures. Um, you'll see other examples of evaporative cooling systems when we get into the greenhouse at CLC. The next uh, variable here is gas and gas exchange. Um, carbon dioxide is needed for um, photosynthesis and um, closed greenhouses, um, many greenhouses are designed to be airtight. Uh, they can become severely deficient in carbon dioxide as illustrated in this chart and uh, reduce the uh, uh, success of uh, 
uh, plants and going through their metabolism. So on this chart, it illustrates that uh, at low levels of carbon dioxide, photosynthesis drops off. Uh, at optimum levels, um, uh, photosynthesis is very, um, very strong. And at high levels, um, the um, carbon dioxide concentration gets too high. Um, the level of plant response uh, levels off, and carbon dioxide at extreme high levels can be um, harmful to plants. And then there's uh, uh, O2, or oxygen, uh, atmospheric oxygen, which is required by plants for, for their respiration, and especially with seed development. And the roots of plants uh, definitely require uh, porous soils with uh, uh, oxygen uh, in order to uh, uh, promote healthy root development. And the last gas I want to mention is ethylene. Ethylene is a uh, plant hormone. It's a uh, colorless, odorless gas, which has a range of impacts on plants. Um, ethylene uh, can uh, prevent flowering, increase branching, uh, help to ripen fruit. Um, it, uh, in fact, uh, ethylene is sprayed on uh, green bananas to uh, um, promote ripening in warehouses before they're shipped to the grocery store. Uh, too much ethylene can cause leaf chlorosis, and um, ethylene can also um, improve rooting. So the three pots on the uh, um, photo to the right uh, is a result of an experiment uh, with uh, exposing the same plant to different levels of ethylene. And you can see that the plant on the left has, uh, has gone to flower, whereas the ethylene in the pot on the right has um, um, inhibited uh, flowering. So uh, it's just uh, another example of the way that these uh, uh, gases, uh, the effect of these gases are very important in plant propagation and the interaction between them uh, uh, needs to be uh, controlled um, in order to encourage uh, successful plant propagation. Uh, the next uh, topic for discussion is uh, media. Uh, that is the, uh, the stuff that the roots grow into. Uh, almost all of the soils uh, or the media used in propagation have uh, no soil in them. Uh, they're called soilless media. Um, and the reason for this is that outside soil, uh, typically topsoil, uh, is loaded with path pathogens, uh, may have uh, poor drainage, poor aeration, or uh, penetration of gases. Uh, it gets hard and compacted, and overall um, not very suitable for indoor uh, plant propagation. So instead, um, we use uh, soilless media, and the qualities we're looking for in these media are uh, good drainage, so that water doesn't uh, pool and uh, uh, prevent the roots from getting the oxygen they need, uh, plenty of aeration, uh, free from pathogens, so the soilless mixes that we use are either uh, sterilized or uh, disinfected. Um, a, a benefit is uh, high moisture holding capacity, retention of nutrients, and uh, fine texture, particularly for uh, uh, smaller propagules like seeds. Uh, fine texture allows them uh, both the roots to penetrate into the ground and the shoots to break through uh, the surface and to get uh, sunlight, air, and the other um, requirements that they need in order to grow. So this is a pretty dense slide, uh, but it um, compares different uh, uh, growing media, all of the elements that might be uh, available to um, grow to use as uh, soilless mix uh, in the green in greenhouse production. Um, the items on the left are the main elements of soilless mix. They might be uh, peat moss um, or shredded bark is a common substitute for uh, peat uh, materials. Uh, vermiculite has a good porous structure. Uh, it's produced by um, uh, heating a, uh, a mineral mica at high temperatures until it pops like popcorn. 
commonly used in propagation. And then perlite, uh, similar to vermiculite, is a, uh, is a mineral a lot, uh, found in lava flows. Uh, it also pops up uh, when it's heated to a high temperature. Uh, perlite is uh, commonly used in mixes in propagation, uh, but not uh, as a standalone uh, growing media. Um, going to the middle of the other side of the slide um, is an example of a, uh, of a common um, um, soilless media mix. And so this one has um, peat moss or bark uh, with vermiculite uh, mixed in, uh, some dolomitic limestone to provide calcium, uh, uh, an amount, a small amount of um, balanced fertilizer. And this mix uh, makes approximately a uh, little more than a cubic yard of soilless mix. So um, pasture pasteurization is one uh, method of uh, removing the pathogens and making uh, media that will not uh, um, be attacked by fungi. And uh, it doesn't kill everything. Uh, but it is probably, in, in many regards, better than sterilization, uh, which may be expensive or hazardous. So that's a, a slide on, uh, on the media that we'll be using in the greenhouse at CLC, and uh, we'll be talking more about this when we get together in the lab. Then there's the uh, nutrients that are um, required by plants in order to grow and um, uh, develop. Uh, there's probably three categories of, of these nutrients. First are the macronutrients, um, the uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are the common elements in the uh, first three um, items listed in almost any bag of fertilizer that you pick up. They're also important uh, components of uh, organic uh, nutrients. Uh, but nitrogen is uh, required in chlorophyll uh, for protein synthesis and if it is deficient in a plant, it, uh, the plant will um, demonstrate a chlorosis, uh, a distinctive pattern of chlorosis. Uh, phosphorus uh, is um, uh, used in um, proteins and nucleic acids, especially in the uh, DNA of plants. It's also important for root formation and for flowering and, and fruit yield. Um, deficiency of uh, phosphorus is uh, noteworthy in that uh, uh, the color of leaves turns blue or purple if uh, phosphorus is deficient. And potassium uh, is important for the water balance. In other words, the uh, maintenance of uh, turgor, it's called in leaves, uh, and to prevent wilting. Uh, potassium exchange is what uh, uh, allows the leaf stomates to open and close. Uh, potassium is also uh, found in protein, sugar, and fat synthesis in plants and uh, helps to stabilize the tissues. Um, too little potassium it, it, uh, results in a necrosis or death of leaves of plants. Then there's uh, another set of secondary nutrients, magnesium, calcium, and sulfur. Um, these have important uh, uh, roles in, in, in plants that you can read. And an additional array of micronutrients, boron, iron, manganese, molybdenum, copper, zinc, and chloride. A very tiny amount of chloride is required, uh, but uh, excessive chloride is a uh, is toxic to plants, so the amount of chloride that is that plants are exposed to is um, is critical, and it, and a, a tiny a trace amount is uh, required, but any more than that is likely to be toxic. So this is the set of nutrients that plants require, um, in addition to carbon, oxygen, and uh, um, they need to be delivered in some form, either in a synthetic um, fertilizer um, in the soil uh, or it, through the addition of organically approved uh, uh, soil amendments. So these mineral fertilizers um, can be um, applied in three different ways, either through 
um, quick release uh, fertilizers sprayed onto plants, uh, slow release fertilizers, gran uh, granules incorporated into the media or applied to the soil surface. Um, they'll uh, um, take weeks or months to break down and release their uh, uh, their contents slowly into the uh, into the um, media. And then a third uh, method is fertigation, uh, incorporating the fertilizer uh, into the irrigation system. And the illustration here on the right is not somebody's swimming pool. It's actually an ebb and flow nutrient distribution system where the um, um, irrigation and fertilization is incorporated into the floor of the greenhouse. Uh, and the um, nutrients are delivered in this, uh, in this water and the water can be uh, um, recovered and, reca and, uh, and recycled. So it's a, uh, a very con um, conservation-oriented um, and sustainable approach to both irrigating and fertilizing plants. Um, but when are fertilizers needed? Well, they're needed after the roots start to develop. Um, and uh, uh, they're not needed uh, in order to germinate seeds uh, because uh, almost all seeds have their own uh, food source to get the uh, new plant started but soon thereafter once the plant uh, begins to um, uh, photosynthesize and roots begin to develop uh, then a supply of nutrients will be required in order to um, uh, for the plant to grow. And these fertilizers, uh, and I'm showing a synthetic, uh, a bag of synthetic fertilizers. Uh, this is the fertilizer that I happen to use for in my uh, nursery for uh, um, fertilizing uh, native trees and shrubs. Uh, this is a slow release fertilizer, and the numbers on the bag indicate that it's 15% uh, uh, um, by weight nitrogen, 15% phosphorus, 15% uh, uh, potassium and this uh, fertilizer also happens to have um, sulfur another 15 percent sulfur um, what I want to say here is a word about uh, phosphorus the number in the middle um, most um, of our soils in Illinois require no additional inputs of um, phosphorus fertilizer in fact it's uh, harmful it um, um, frequently gets into our water supply and causes uh, eutrophication of our rivers and lakes and ponds. Um, so um, we'll talk more about uh, sustainability and uh, some of the detrimental um, aspects of our um, use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, but in particular the uh, uh, elements uh, nitrogen, the 15 the first number and phosphorus, uh, the second number, uh, are um, not generally needed in uh, uh, in any soils, uh, uh, in any native soils that we have in, in Illinois. And in fact, the third number, um, the potassium, uh, when it's uh, applied in pota potash form, uh, can actually be detrimental to soils. Um, so. Um, the things that we use uh, in a greenhouse um, may differ from, in a nursery, may differ from the things that, um, or may be the same as things that are used out in uh, farm fields and uh, uh, gardens, but these things should be uh, used with care and uh, uh, testing soils uh, should be conducted in order to um, verify that the um, that the nutrients are really required before they're indiscriminately dumped onto our soils. So back to uh, uh, plant propagation after that little digression and some other issues ar about around fertilizing uh, include uh, that uh, it's common to add slow release fertilizers to media prior to sticking cuttings uh, which is what I use this fertilizer for. And uh, things to watch out for are that uh, the fertilizers, um, the nutrients are likely to leach out of the soil, uh, wasting them and requiring them to be re 
replaced in the in the growth media and uh, it is possible and advisable to conduct uh, soil tests uh, both on a small scale in the greenhouse using soil testing kits and obviously on a much larger scale in your garden or on a farm setting in order to um, avoid um, using unnecessary and possibly um, poisonous um, or, or fertilizers that might poison the soil and the um, important uh, uh, organisms that exist in the soil. A word here about propagation containers and then I'm going to stop this uh, part of, uh, of the lesson. Uh, I'm, there's a whole range of different uh, seed trays, flats, and containers that are used in greenhouses and nurseries. Uh, we'll talk about uh, and use uh, several of them during the course of the semester. Uh, but the materials uh, could be plastic pots, fiber or paper pots, um, preformed blocks of rock wool, peat, fiber, or foam, different containers that uh, vary from uh, the two and a half inch container I've got pictured below up to uh, 10 gallon or larger um, um, nursery containers. Um, also known as cans, nursery cans. Uh, some of them are uh, uh, some of them are designed to prune the roots, like the one like the one pictured, with holes that prevent the roots uh, from uh, penetrating the container. And uh, uh, this system will produce a uh, root system that is uh, that does not spiral around inside the container, where it will. Um, be problematic and, and uh, prevent a, uh, the plant root system from becoming established once it's planted out into its final location. Um, cell packs are uh, uh, commonly used for um, sale of uh, potting plants and vegetables. Uh, and oh, I've talked about root planting, uh, pruning pots, and I will be um, talking about and using those when we get to. Uh, uh, cutting propagation later on in the uh, in the semester. So we've covered the first few themes of um, plant propagation and the uh, um, things that we think about in terms of promoting um, a healthy development of propagules and I will be back with you in a few minutes to continue this in part two.